Welcome to the ITU studio here at the Radio Communication Assembly just prior to the World Radio Communication Conference 2023 in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Mike Lindsay who is the Chief Technology Officer for AstroScale Limited. Mike, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, uh, I know that uh, you're, you're here for a, a reasonably short visit, um, but it's obviously important enough for you to be here and have uh, taken the time to, uh, uh, to come here because I believe you're based in Tokyo, although I know that Ostroscale is obviously in different countries. Uh, I wanted to perhaps start off by asking you a little bit about what Astroscale does. I know that you are uh, promoting safe and sustainable space for the development uh, and the benefit of uh, future generations. And so um, perhaps you can tell us a little bit about your tasks, your roles, your chief technology officer. And I know that you've, you've also been involved in, uh, in NASA. That's right. So yes, as you mentioned, Astroscale is dedicated to the sustainable development of space. And we focus on the provision of a number of in-orbit services. Uh, these are services such as inspection, life extension, uh, end-of-life removal, active debris removal, and then we can expand to other services such as refueling, repair, and hopefully one day recycling. And the aim of these services is to reduce the amount of uh, essentially waste that is launched into space or is left remaining in space because that becomes a hazard uh, to other operators in space. And the reason that we're here at the ITU is because uh, the more debris that is created and generated in space, actually negatively impacts the, the efficient access, the equitable access to space uh, spectrum and orbital resources. So we, we're actually very encouraged to see the ITU start to think about long-term sustainability of orbit resources as well as spectrum resources because they're very much interconnected. Indeed, because I mean, ITU's key objective the, of the, the ITU regulations is the, is the avoidance of harmful radio interference. Uh, I mean, obviously, we don't regulate uh, other aspects such as physical objects, etc. But I know that there's a lot flying out there. There's something like 10,000 uh, tons of space debris, apparently. And there's, there's even 34,000 pieces of larger debris that are over, over 10 centimetres large. So there's a big possibilities, obviously, for improving uh, uh, the environment up there. But um, th I know that you're also getting involved in, a, in or possibly uh, looking at a, a lightweight version of uh, uh, the ISS uh, robotic uh, arm on that. Is that uh, something which um, you could talk about? Yeah, absolutely. So part of our technologies require us to dock with a client object in space. And this object may be as large as a four ton you know, school bus, uh, or it could be as small, about the size of this, this table here, about 100 kilograms. And in order to dock with and, and control these objects, we have to develop a, a variety of interface technologies. So we have uh, been developing magnetic capture devices uh, to use a magnetic extension device that uh, can interface with ferromagnetic docking plates on satellites. And there are hundreds of those in space already. Uh, but for objects that are not necessarily prepared with an interface, we are developing robotic arms, as you mentioned, that will help us manipulate the end effector to the right part of the spacecraft where we can maintain a safe and reliable hold on that client object. Now, you're also interested, of course, in international policies. Are there any particular outcomes that you're hoping for from, uh, from the World Radio Communication Conference? Yeah, absolutely. So we're in a very nascent industry here, the in-orbit servicing uh, industry. And this requires three aspects. We need the technology to be there. We need to support the, the growth of the, the ecosystem and the economics that uh, will enable a long-term sustainable uh, in-orbit servicing uh, industry. Um, and then there needs to be supporting policy. So part of the reason we're here is to make sure that spectrum allocations, for example, consider in-orbit servicing missions because it's, it's actually quite a unique mission profile that our services will be utilizing. Uh, we're frequently moving between altitudes uh, to different client orbits uh, and we have periods of time where we, we don't need high data volumes and then there's other periods of time when we're taking lots of imagery, LIDAR, infrared data that we need to transmit. So we need high bandwidth for critical docking operations. 
So these types of activities, uh, to our knowledge, have not been well studied at the ITU. Um, so we're here advocating for the, the proper consideration uh, because these services, again, are going to be absolutely critical for long-term sustainability of space. How optimistic are you that uh, we can have a safe and sustainable space environment? Well, <laughs> things at the ITU do take uh, several years to implement. So actually, this is the first time Astroscale has been represented at an ITU event. Uh, personally, this is my first RA. Um, so it's the first step we're taking towards advocating for this. And uh, we're seeing some steps. Again, uh, there was Resolution 219 coming out of the Plenipotentiary Conference in Bucharest in 2022 that called attention to sustainability. So I think the interest is there. Uh, people are becoming more concerned about this. Um, again, the progress is going to be slow, but it will be steady. I think the issue is becoming more and more apparent uh, to everyone. And uh, we hope to see more support for solutions. One, one small step for man or, or woman. <laughs> <laughs> one giant leap for mankind. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for being with us in the studio. And I'm sure we will get a chance to catch up again very soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And if you've enjoyed this interview, then do uh, make sure that you check out all the other interviews on the ITU YouTube channel, as well as our podcast channels on SoundCloud, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And uh, do make sure that you check out also our website, which is www.itu.int. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in.